Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Nerd Den here, and today I am going to be doing my review for the 8th episode of Series 12 of Doctor Who, The Haunting of Villa Dididati. I may have completely screwed up the pronunciation of that villa, but yeah. It was an absolutely fantastic episode, like, I'm just gonna put it bluntly there, it was just so, so awesome. Like, for me personally... It was the best Cyberman story that I have seen in years. And it it felt really good to have a Cyberman or, you know, the Cybermen in general at the front of the story instead of being pushed to the sidelines where they were in uh, Peter Capaldi and uh, Matt Smith's time as the Doctors. But it was a good return to form for the Cybermen. I loved it. The um, feel of the episode as well, like the whole ghost slash horror elements, and how that quickly turned around from a gothic horror to a uh, sci-fi Frankenstein monster that literally the lone Cyberman looks like that. And w when people originally talked about the rumours of Mary Shelley uh, being inspired by a Cyberman showing up in the episode, I was like, okay... It, it it makes a lot of sense. Big Finish have done it before, but whoo! I was I was so amazed at how well they pulled that off, and the design from head to toe was very Frankenstein like. And whilst it wasn't confirmed de def definitively um, in the episode, you know, let's be honest. If you were looking for material to write a book or you know anything like that. And you had a Cyberman who looked, you know, made out of spare parts and the conversion isn't necessarily done properly. You are going to be inspired a little bit. But uh, in terms of the guest cast, they were pretty good. I'm not going to lie. Um, it, we didn't see much of uh, Mary Shelley's husband because obviously that was the whole reason behind the Cyberman turning up in 1816. But the companions were pretty good as well. Um... We didn't get much out of Ryan or Yaz, really. Uh, Bradley Walsh's character, as Graham did, kind of take a little bit center stage. But the whole story did mostly um, focus on the Doctor and, obviously, what was going on with Mary Shelley as well. So, uh, the whole feel of the episode, it flowed really consistently as well. Uh, that was something that I noted was pretty much a first for series 12. Um, well, I, I say that Fugitive of the Jadoon did flow pretty well as well, personally, for me. I did have a little dip in there, but it, for the most part, flowed consistently. But, yeah, th this episode flowed really well, and I really enjoyed it. And, I, you know, I'm going to sound a little bit repetitive, but it, it was, like, I was so gobsmacked. I, I thought it was going to be, eh, it's going to be a filler episode just to have the Cyberman show up at the end. But no, the, the fact that the lone Cyberman played an integral role for this story as well, uh, it was pretty good. I mean, it wasn't any utopia or anything, because obviously in Series 3, utopia tied into the Sound of the Drums and The Last of the Time Lords. But it was a really good episode, and uh, I would... I just really enjoy, really enjoyed the atmosphere of the horror and the blending of the lighting, like the atmospheric lighting and stuff used for when the Cyberman was walking through the corridors and the walkways was really, really amazing. And the whole dialogue that the lone Cyberman said about, you know, he killed his own children because they joined up against the Resistance, that obviously against the Cyberman, was like, what? So he must have been like a loyal Cyberman devoter before being converted. And that was just like, what? And then obviously the Doctor did the inevitable thing of uh, giving the lone Cyberman of what he wanted. That obviously set stage for the future episodes that are... Oh, there's only two left now. That's kind of a shame because I've really enjoyed this series like overall. Um, a lot more than I originally thought I would. But in terms of giving this um, episode a rating out of 10, I'm going to have to go, again, 
for another 10 out of 10 because it was absolutely fantastic from start to finish. It flowed consistently and I loved it. Like, hands down, the guest cast were awesome. Um, obviously, Mary Shelley took uh, center stage. Lord Byron did get a little bit annoying. But, yeah, I, I did really enjoy this atmospheric, horrific episode. Because in terms of, what, you know, we're, we're exploring the dark side to the Cybermen. And that's something I've always wanted to see on screen. And it's hard, it, it's hard to believe that this is the guy who designed the Cyberwoman episode in Torchwood. Yeah, let's, let's just say it like that. But, um, yeah, I will be wrapping up this video here. I know it's not, again, my reviews are just literally my impressions after watching the episode. But uh, they're not formally structured or anything. It's just me rambling. But I did really enjoy this episode. So, yeah, 10 out of 10 for me. It was absolutely fantastic. And I cannot wait to see more of the Lone Cyberman. And if they keep this up, we could have a perfect finale. But, yeah, I'll see you all next time. Thank you very much for watching. Bye for now.